Welcome back, Red Spotter, and that's really the Red Spotlight Podcast. I'm your host today, Alexis J. Soto, joined by my very good friends, Mr. David Francisco, live from Tucson, Arizona, <laughs> the recently flipped uh, to uh, Arizona. Uh, congratulations, <laughs> Mr. Francisco, for delivering that win over to Joe Biden. How are you doing today? I'm good. And, every and vote, I'm also every vote every does vote, count. <laughs> it does. It does. It very much does. In a does. swing it was, state, it does. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also joined by that other voice, uh, Mr. Peter Martinez, um, our eternal optimist here, although sometimes he can be misconstrued for something else. How are you doing today, Mr. Martinez? I wonder who uh, caused that impression of me. I, for <laughs> one, blame the creator, which is Kyle Lira. Um, he... Do you want the evidence? Go check out the Fantasy Fair, which, by the way, I, I, we're going to get into what this show is, but I just want to, I don't want to, like, miss an occasion that happened last week on the show. Neither of you two were on it, but I was doing a podcast here on Red Spotlight with Kyle, and I couldn't mm-hmm. tell if he was joking or not, but um, he is obviously the host of the Fantasy Fair podcast, which I will be on later tonight, actually, for the Muppet Month uh, first oh. installment. But, uh, by the way, I don't know why he doesn't invite you to these things, Peter, because I know you're how, a fan of the Muppet movies as well. How so. quaint. <laughs> how quaint, right? But he was here, and mm-hmm. uh, we were talking about how like we were not propagandists for Joe Biden or the Democratic Party. Um, and then he added in a quip, uh, he himself offered this clip of unlike the what are we the fantasy fair uh, which might seem to be an admission of, <laughs> uh, to the accusations <laughs> that Peter has been uh, throwing around all year long I mean I know he hasn't been watching this podcast because I've, I've been going pretty hard <laughs> literally oh, every week crap show. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember. I, I, I don't. I don't even. I can't think of the last time uh, Kyle listened to a show we did. No, no, never. But that's why I, com- I confidently call it a piece of shit because he's not gonna hear it. Well, I will be on said piece of shit later on uh, with uh, Miss Moreno, who is, uh, from what I hear, doing overtime uh, with. Uh, oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. What is she doing? Uh, she has two of, jobs. Uh, a lot of papal work, I hear. Two jobs? Uh, mm-hmm. mm. my, my Christmas gift better be great this year, then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll be a gift-wrapped, uh, I guess, uh, I think maybe, I don't know, good tweet uh, that says, by Alexis, what if she tweets, I love Up. Up is my favorite Pixar film. She prints that out and then mm. frames it. How How about that? I'll take that, but it better be an expensive frame. (laughs) (laughs) A nice-ass frame. Yeah. Well, anyway, I want to remind you all you're listening to Red Spotlight. This is episode guest 279. This is episode 279. Can you believe that crap? 279 episodes. I think a year ago, we were at 294, 290... I'm sorry, excuse me. 194, 195. Um... And that just goes to show you uh, how much content we have been working so tirelessly to produce for all of you. Uh, just about almost practically 100 episodes within a year, if you can believe that. Yeah. Um, so there's that for you. We're gathered here, actually, to finish off our segment of The Good Place, the NBC comedy series created by Michael Shore, who is known for other work such as The Office and Parks and Recreation and Brooklyn Nine-Nine, a very successful individual, uh, clearly in the field of television. And last time, David and I were talking about seasons one and two uh, at great length, talking about the characters themselves, how we felt about the show. Uh, And honestly, I think uh, that episode dropped on the 1st of November. We might have recorded it in late October. But David, correct me if I'm wrong, but doesn't it feel like it's been ages Mm -hmm. since that happened? Yeah. (laughs) The world is, I don't know if it was, you know, things that happened in the world, but clearly I think uh, a lot has changed. Mm. Um, Yeah. We have some podcasts uh, where we practically celebrate uh, the change that happened, if you want to listen to those. 
uh, with Peter Martinez called Wisa Free. Uh, <laughs> and uh, people, <laughs> people seem to appreciate that title for a change. Uh, every now and then I get a People good just means me. <laughs> anyone i mean i'm too thankful for any kind of a compliment so i guess i'll take it in that sense right so here we are uh as a just a brief little reminder uh since we invoked the name of the fantasy fair they are doing muppet month over there they're going to recap the movies uh the original muppet movie the great muppet caper muppets take manhattan uh the muppets and muppets most wanted uh it's november what 17th 18th now and they're only just starting Mm-hmm. Well, I'll just chalk it up to schedules there. But also on this podcast, uh, we have Guillermo del Toro month or the del Toro files. We already recorded our episode talking about Kronos, the devil's backbone and Pan's labyrinth, which will be up, I think, before this episode. So it should already be available for you to enjoy. And the next one we're doing is going to be about Blade 2, Hellboy, Hellboy 2, the Golden Army and Pacific Rim, which I'm very much looking forward to talking about um, that wonderful blast from the past. So are we all good here with, uh, I think, all the stuff that we have going on? I don't think Bon and Beyond is on this year. (laughs) Um, That's up to Kyle. I don't... He told me last week week that he didn't know uh, what was going on with that. But he's in charge. (laughs) I don't know. He asked me if we could do a, a video on uh, what's his name's death, and I was like, "Yeah, sure." I gave oh, him Sean Connery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, no response after that. So I don't know. <laughs> I'll, I guess I'll ask him when I see him later tonight. He's probably too busy with that trash show, The Fantasy Fair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what fun! So. Let's go ahead and get into it today. We have The Good Place. Now, we will discuss seasons three and four, but since Peter, uh, he was scheduled to be on last time. He was not, unfortunately. He had a, you know, last minute cancel uh, for very understandable reasons. Uh, we are, of course, living in the age of a pandemic, and he is an essential worker of sorts. So, of course, we can definitely understand that, along with his assistant, Tootsie the Cat, uh, <laughs> who I hear uh, is, uh, you know, a very She's therapeutic with the wires, as always, as always. <sighs> so Peter, uh, mm-hmm. so you were actually one of the the people that were that was encouraging uh, me among alongside David. David has actually been like an OG good place uh, fan mm-hmm. from the very beginning. And so, can you like talk about how you found the show, what appealed you to it? You know, the basic introductory stuff about like what your feelings were about this program. Mm. I'm trying to remember. I think when I saw it, it was like the first episode, like premiere or something like that. I I feel like I watched it pretty early. Huh. Interesting. Mm. Somewhat early anyway. Uh, I thought it was an interesting premise any network show that isn't just like a variation of I'm a cop, I'm a doctor, I'm <laughs> I'm some whatever blue collar fucking I'm a firefighter, anything that isn't that, I'll at least give you a chance. Uh, because it just seems like every every network show, it doesn't matter what the hook is. The hook could be a baby is able to speak, right? A talking baby. By the end of that first episode, that talking baby is going to be a doctor. And now (laughs) moving forward, every episode is going to be about how that talking baby is a doctor and the trials and tribulations of that talking baby being a doctor and all the other doctors and the romance and, and all this, you know, uh, every show is that. And this show wasn't that. Mm-hmm. So I was no. like, <laughs> okay, one, an interesting premise actually made it onto uh, NBC. Okay. And then also, I like the people that are in it. Of course, uh, Ted Danson. Uh, what's her name? Kristen Bell. Kristen Bell. Uh, the promos looked kind of funny. 
uh, I like the people that created it. So I was like, yeah, yeah, this looks like something worth watching. Uh, the first episode, really fun, really good, really captured me. You know, like, is this idea of like they're in the good place and just the sort of world building they do in the, in the good place in that first episode. And then also the fact that like, oh, you know, she's not she's not a good person. <laughs> she's she's a piece of shit. There must have been some mix up and she ended up here. And now just this sort of the whole it's a good jumping off premise you know like okay trying to keep from being sent to hell uh well you know learning to be a good person in the good place while keeping it hidden you know all that jazz it's fun the characters were fun um so yeah that's kind of how i got into it and then i saw of course saw the whole first season i loved it i thought it was great uh (laughs) the twist ending Oh my god, that's fantastic! Of course, uh, and then the second season was where I was like, "Yeah, this is a really good show." Was because they could have. What kind of worried me about that twist ending was that they were just gonna reset everything, mm. and then like they were gonna be doing the same shit next season. You know what I mean? No, the writers themselves actually like were making sure okay we're not gonna do the same thing in the second season so they like work yeah. right away we talked about this actually in the last uh episode while you weren't here uh about that because you're right that was everyone's impression that almost immediately after the season one finale the great season one finale you're thinking oh wait so is the whole season two just going to be basically season one again but with a different variation on it but now they're and- trying to remember every and it's right, like right uh... right right and that worried me because this is still a network television show. Exactly. And that's, that's, some, that's exactly what some network TV bullshit would pull. So it's just like, uh, I mean, this the first season was really good. So, of course, it's like I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt. But very early on, I can't. Is, is it the first episode where um, <laughs> they just keep figuring? I don't think it's the first episode, but no. pretty early on. They just, Oop. you see a montage where they just keep figuring out, <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is the bad place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then it's kind of insinuated, like, this has gone on for, like, years, at least in what would we would consider years, like, maybe even hundreds of, of just them. Well, how this show, at this point, they haven't introduced a term, but I think the show uses uh, Jeremy Baramy or Baramy Jeremy, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, mm-hmm. not yet, but just in, in human time. Right. Uh, <laughs> the equivalent of would be. And, and, you know, you see them go through this constant, like, uh, sort of the montage of all the different ways that he tries to teach them. And then all of them, like, wait, this is the bad place. Like, <laughs> the one that sticks out is, like, they were monks and, <laughs> and they're walking by. And then she's just like, wait a minute. This is the bad place. <laughs> And then uh, what's his name? The the dumb Michael. one. Oh, uh, Jason. Jason. He figures it out, and then he's like, "Fuck you! You figured it out this time." <laughs> like he's getting worse. <laughs> like God damn it! And then you know he restarts it. Uh, but I was like, "This is awesome!" Because it just re um, it's like okay, it's not gonna be the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, they're really gonna push this premise further instead of. Uh, keeping keeping it safe, and then yeah, that's ultimately what they did in the second season. There's a lot of fun, great stuff in the second season. Oh, the the main cast is a lot of fun. Oh my god! Um, yeah, what's her name? The uh... <laughs> she's not a woman. <laughs> Janet. Oh, Janet, uh, not a girl. Janet, not a girl. Yeah, she always keeps pointing it out. <laughs> not a girl. Um, I, she's one of my favorites i think she's oh, so yeah. so funny mm-hmm. um but yeah seasons one through two were really good now there's just so much there to really uh just reaffirm right we had talked about a little bit of it on the first episode but you know as far as like what really uh charms me uh about the series and why i was uh 
so, so thankful that I waited for the show to be over. That way I could binge it because especially with like, I was going to say like season one or two with every episode of this, every single episode of the show, it ends in a way where I can't possibly wait or would have been able to wait a whole week to see what happened immediately next. They always, you know, you know, we always have the trope of like, well, what's the hook to get you into the show? I feel like they have kind of the reverse where they reveal a little bit of a, a tease or a cliffhanger of sorts at the end of every episode that completely blows your mind as to like, wait, I thought this was happening, but that really isn't at all what's happening and you have to see the next episode. And so I think like the, the binge model um, that was so clearly established, uh, you know, in the early days of Netflix, uh, this is a side conversation, obviously, because it's kind of going away now with like other streamers like Disney Plus or HBO Max. But the binge model, I think, absolutely benefits the show so much so to the point where we have to keep reminding ourselves this is a network television series, but it 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 absolutely doesn't resemble a network television show at all. I mean, I think just from the the flat out free reign, the creativity that is littered all throughout the series, and then also uh, to its episode count has like what 13, 14 episodes uh, every season, Fairly which short. is even for a, for the genre that it's in, which is a comedy. I wouldn't qualify it as a sitcom, but it is a comedy. Uh, that's very short for that. Uh, like that type of show would easily get something like twenty-two episodes a year uh, on network television. Um, and David, uh, can you remind us again? Because you had some very good insight about um, how this. And I'm not even sure uh, Peter is aware of this, but you had talked about how th- how this was even allowed to exist. Because oh. you had said that it was like a a mid season replacement of sorts yeah, for the first season. So basically, like Mike Shore, we finished Parks and Rec, and they went up to him and went, "Hey, uh, we need to fill in some time on the network. Uh, we can give you thirteen episodes. Go nuts!" <laughs> and it was like he just kind of like took that chance to make something really, really crazy. <laughs> and I couldn't believe it for a second. I mean, it is Michael Shore, and he has a great track record. But, like, when does a network mm-hmm. ever, like, give you, like, the ability to do whatever you want? Mm-hmm. Uh, Ryan Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that works two ways now, right? With uh, FX yeah. and Netflix, which he left FX for Netflix uh, in that sense. But, I mean, the traditional network system, yeah. uh, like NBC. It seems like, get, like getting television made on the traditional network system is like fucking brutal like you know they have pilot season where they make like a Mm -hmm. shit ton of pilots um maybe just a handful of them get greenlit and then only a handful of them survive like one season you know like (laughs) i don't know tv like network tv is fucking brutal and then if you're lucky enough, you'll get on a good show and it'll last like 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like um, Modern Family was a very successful uh, mm-hmm. sitcom, one of the last great sitcoms. And it, I think it, what, it just ended this year? Yeah. And it's been on the year for what, like 11 yeah. years? Well, Grey's Anatomy, s- oh, several oh times, Law and Order. I thought that that show had already finished. <laughs> Like several right? times, <laughs> and like I've been surprised multiple times where it's like, oh, it's still going, like it's still, mm-hmm. but it is. I I'd imagine all the original cast is like dead or gone by now, not in real life, but like in the show. Like, oh okay, <laughs> no, it's not that old. <laughs> Maybe in real life, depending on how long it's lasted. Yeah. I mean, it's just the sad reality of how you know fleeting our lives are. Um, Kyle hates that show, by the way. He's always hated it. I think there's always been a rivalry between that and his other... His preferred House, MD is yeah. House MD. Of course, MD. he goes for uh, the man, uh, doctor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, which, I mean, House MD has been off the air since we were in high school, I think. Maybe just barely getting yeah, in high school. Yeah, but that shit ran uh, forever, too. Eight yeah, seasons. Yeah, like, I don't... Hmm. I don't know. And I think that the contrast with all of these shows is that, you know, look at the miracle that this is, right? We don't want to, like... I guess we'll, we'll get into the season three right now. But I think it's important to, you know, bring this up. So we mentioned that every... Every season, this show has like 13 or 14 episodes. Um, they're very, they don't feel short. They feel exactly as long as they need to be. Mm-hmm. The character work um, that is that is, is being done uh, throughout these seasons, I think, is some of the best character work uh, that can rival, if not exceed, um other kinds of shows like these that do it in seven seasons, eight seasons, nine seasons, uh, 10 seasons easily is how I think it speaks to the quality of the show. But then also think about the fact that it was only four seasons and it's not as if it was like canceled. It's not as if it was like a, like a low ratings earner. I think it did. I think it was pretty solid. I think NBC really loved uh, the program and what it brought on. If it was 13 episodes and it was a good mid season show mm-hmm. uh, to put on. But from what I hear, it was Michael Shore, the creative head of the show. It was their decision to creatively end the series at four. I'm happy about that because yeah. no, you, I, you could have seen this kind of getting, mm, off the rails or even stale like i think there was only so far you could have pushed it and they pushed it plenty far Mm -hmm. (laughs) the 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 premise and the Mm -hmm. whole idea so yeah david i was gonna say like uh uh, towards the end of the series there was a bunch of advertisements of all the casts like just them always keep saying i'm just really glad that they got to end in their own terms and all that like there was a bunch of advertisements about about that well yeah like we've been talking mm-hmm. like there's only two modes for television either you get canceled super early or you fucking go on forever and ever and ever and ever until you peter out you know 20 years from now <laughs> mm-hmm. uh long past when the story has been good or 30 years if you're the simpsons Fuck. What was it, like, <laughs> Law and Order? They canceled it after, like, 20-some seasons or some shit like that? Well, that's just, was it the original one or one the of original. the spinoffs? Oh, really? oh, they are canceled. Wow. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, see? You don't even fucking know. Like, I... <laughs> this, was, this was, like, a while back. So, yeah, mm-hmm. they, that's why, I don't know. I kind of like the um television on, on streaming. Just because it, I, it just seems like a better way to do it. One less restrictions, so you have more opportunities to go wild. You don't have to structure your your work around advertising breaks in the middle of the story. <laughs> uh, and then also, your show will get a definitive ending because that shit does not go for twenty seasons on uh, mm. on streaming. You'll be lucky to get five. So, yeah, I mean, we've been we've been talking about it, I think, uh, rather frequently here uh, of uh, Netflix in particular has uh, they're very picky uh, with what shows uh, they choose to renew or not. And even it, a lot of very popular programs they have, like, let's say Sabrina, for example, three seasons and you're done. A lot, there's a lot of good shows, I think, on Netflix that have had been in that example of like three and you're done because after three or four years, there's no value in having you on in terms of bringing in new subscribers. And that's a different mm-hmm. model, obviously, if you're a subscription service rather than you're a television network. Two very different measurements of yeah. how you value um, the value to, with, you know, the home. Te- with network television, you just have to remain relatively popular. Whereas with streaming you have to grow in popularity you have to continue mm. to bring forth new subscribers so it's it's a little more cutthroat in the longevity but i think it's a little bit easier in the simply existing you know <laughs> being made in the first place cuz oh my god it, what's funny is looking at netflix and looking at how many things they have that are just 
season one. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> Not all of it's great, but that's why it's just funny. Um, but yeah. And it also can be more freeing. I mean, we, we keep saying this, but like with the, uh, I think one of the rare examples uh, that Netflix has allowed a show to continue on and on would be Stranger Things. They had really good three seasons and uh, we were, at least I was under the impression that the fourth would have been the last one, but we've been hearing things lately that maybe fifth uh, would be the last one. I Are know, they right? they on another season? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but from what I understand, though, it's uh, that came directly from the Duffer brothers or the Duffers, if you want to call them that. So whatever the case would be, it does seem as if that's being motivated by a creative decision rather than a business one. Um, um, I, I would know. still only give them one more. <laughs> right. I I've, mean, I've really liked season two and three, but uh-huh. they're they're still kind of reduxes of the first season. Mm. So it's like, which it only goes to show you that uh, certain television shows only have a certain shelf life. Um, yeah. But I think we're all of the mind that when it comes to the good place, it used its time to the I think the best of its capabilities. I mean, at least for me, it really exceeded mm-hmm. my expectations uh, when we're talking about seasons three and four about where they could take the series. Um, and I guess we can go ahead and start getting into it. <laughs> uh, so, David, let's yeah. start with you. And uh, can you quickly uh, summarize uh, the journey that we're on with season three? Uh, and this one was a pretty massive shift, I think, from last season two. <laughs> so now we're on Earth, right? Yep. Uh, basically, Michael um, went to Earth and change uh, the moment of the character's death. So now they're alive. Pretty and... hilariously, I might add, that was a great sequence of him trying to push people out of the <laughs> way, especially with Chidi. By the way, it's so macabre, right? Like yeah. how hilarious they've made some of these deaths, but fucking Chidi getting killed by a damn AC unit to the head. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we commented on that, but that's always just been hilarious. Pretty, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> always like Jason's death. Oh my god. That was just stupid. I mean <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, no. Uh actually it was funny. Um Tahani's death. Uh so oh my when God, that was dark. Yeah, so they showed it in the second season and they actually filmed both her death and Michael saving her during the second season. And oh. hers is the only one that they actually like filmed beforehand before season three. Uh, everyone else they had to like redo it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so now the way that, the reason why is because they're basically retaking, I guess, the point system and figure out his Michael's plan. Well, with that their allegation was that the the point system to see who can get into the good place is fucked up. Um, basically, no <laughs> no ethical consumption under capitalism type bullshit. <laughs> Isn't that basically what it is? It's not and very so subtle like, with its anti-capitalist message. We need messages. to redo the system. <laughs> yeah, basically. Eh, not the most. <laughs> um, so their whole thing is, it, this system is unfair and we need to rethink the the system. And I think their whole thing is like, if given enough time, they would have become better people mm-hmm. on their own. So now... Um, that's what they're doing. That's thanks to Jeremy Baramy. <laughs> no time had really passed at all. Mm-hmm. And they were able to, yeah, go back to those points and save them from certain death. Only of so course, they can I think retry. Right. Except mm-hmm. of course, at the end of the last season, things weren't working out as hoped as the, they were hoping, obviously, because after a certain point, uh, it seemed as if there was a regressing, uh, on the part of um, Eleanor and then the big cliffhanger at the end of last season which was Eleanor flying all the way to Australia to get back with Chidi because whenever she's with Chidi she's better uh, or, they're, or they're all better when they're together so I think the point uh, what happened with Michael is he was trying to orchestrate all of the players coming back into the same location, mm-hmm. which was very, again, I know this may sound played out, but I, I honestly do feel this way. Like it's just, 
the, the show in and of itself is beyond entertaining and very interesting. It is a, a great concept and it's always fun to see how they play with it every single year. But even just as something as simple as like Michael going uh, to different different locations and trying to entice look like Tahani to come over to Australia and stay there and then watching the interactions, I think it's brilliant. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just so much fun, and it, I think the season really kicks in into gear when they're they're together. Uh, it's I'm trying to find out what the words, right? We've seen so many different versions of these characters, mm -hmm. uh, how many reboot, rebooted versions of them. And yet uh, they never, in my view, become annoying or grating every single time they have to start all over again. Mm -hmm. It always presents uh, kind of a new charm to it and the dynamic of their group. Um, and so they're all with Chidi at the university and they're, I guess the, the bait that they were given was they're taking part uh, in a near death, uh, experience study of some sort. Um, all the while the people at the bad place, uh, they're bad. Um, <laughs> and they bring back, they're being um, very bad. They're being very bad. And they, uh, throw in, um, a loose cannon in the form of Adam Scott coming back, <laughs> uh, from I think season one. Oh my god, he was the best. Uh, well, well, for one thing, uh, what I like about the beginning of the third season is sh them showing like how they really, how each of the characters really tried to uh, change their lives, and yeah, it was it was so funny with um, Jason that he was just like, "No, we're gonna try it and like be the best dance group ever," and they just keep losing in every single competition that they make and and at the end and towards the end he was just like you know what forget it we're out of money let's steal some stuff so we can keep doing this <laughs> it was just it was funny i don't know you know that's a good point you know i found it to be as somebody who cares for these characters miserable watching them like uh become so inspired and and then just bursting into flames as the months go on and just what a complete fail it was on their part, you know, and trying to become better versions of themselves. But what I also, while that did make me feel a bit sad for them, it also just made me think, wow, the show really doesn't take it easy on these guys. Mm -hmm. And it also just reminds you of how easy it could have just been for them to just, Oh, and this is where they get better because they just decided to be better. And it could have been that simplistic. Uh, you can definitely imagine other shows just being that surface level. Mm -hmm. But I've always admired uh, the absolute refusal to look at life as something that's easy. Uh, and that's it's one of those things I've, uh, that I strongly believe that anyone who watches this show can learn something and use it to help their life uh in, in in large part because they do employ uh these big ethical questions and a lot of the stuff that's taught in these classes that unfortunately um widespread in public uh, education and also have, it's not required in uh if you're going to a university or whatever ethics classes people should be taught about this stuff and yet we make an active choice as a society to treat it as oh you can learn about ethics and whether and what it means to be good or not if you want to <laughs> but i think we have learned that our capitalistic society only looks out for our best uh interests at heart as long as it's correlated to our bottom dollar um it was a roundabout way of saying fuck capitalism, mm -hmm. uh, if that wasn't uh, subtle at all. But, you know, I, I the point is, I appreciate this show never being simplistic, never being one dimensional and just going for it. And it's, it's yeah, you know, there's never ahead. an easy answer. No, yeah, that's always no, the, that was it. <laughs> no, that's always the big <laughs> question in every single episode. It's like, what do I do? And there's like there's 50 different answers for everything and all that. But and yeah. sometimes they're also even spelled out on a on a chalkboard or something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, the show is kind of like uh, 
a baby's first philosophy class mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they touch on uh, a lot of different philosophical questions about morality and the different um, viewpoints on morality uh, one of my favorites is when they um just for comedic value they tackled the trolley problem <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it was just uh especially because uh it's all about making a decision and it played on like chidi's inability to make decisions <laughs> so that they just kept killing <laughs> the the non-existent people when he was getting traumatized more and more <laughs> uh so they, they take those sort of uh what i think many would consider boring questions and they, they have fun with them mm -hmm. and they also you know make you at home question like hmm what is moral what does it mean to be a good person you know uh what does it mean to deserve to go to the good place and right. that's something they ask throughout the whole series especially if go they're ahead. integral especially if they're integral to the uh to your favorite character storylines. I think for me, this was either early or in the middle of the season, a moment that definitely felt very relatable because I've lived through this uh, on several different occasions, which was when Eleanor was slowly realizing that the bond that she had made with, you know, Chidi, Tahani and Jason, I forget what was Chidi's girlfriend's name at the time. Uh, uh, the one he was with before yeah. he died? Uh-huh. Oh, I can't remember. Yeah. Well, oh, the, the one, obviously, that we see throughout season three. Uh, I think I'll remember it in a bit. But the point is, uh, the program was ending. The study was over, and uh, Tahani was having this party. And at this party, uh, Eleanor realizes that this is the end of the road uh, for this part of her life and their life together. And that they would all have to go their separate ways. And the odds of any of them being back in the same room together are all but impossible. And at least um, what she was going through was just she was panicking. She was also scared because she clearly is a very damaged person and also not somebody who thinks that they can do uh, a lot on their own. Uh, and clearly viewed these people as family. And the thought that she could be happy or quote-unquote good without them was terrifying. And what she usually does in uh, situations like that is she lashes out. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, I felt so bad for her uh, when in the middle of this party with all these people and these speeches happening and she like tries to make a pitch for the group to stay together and she's just so like summarily rejected almost immediately like that's nice sweetie but I got a plane to catch basically was the answer <laughs> that they gave her um, for that and then of course there was a big fight and everything uh, and, you know, there are sentimental people like me out there that can relate to that. Not that I reacted <laughs> that way to people. Well, but also, I didn't hit you. OK, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm talking and I and I I'm referring to more important people in my life than you. OK, so um, <laughs> I mean, I never said I was referring to myself. <laughs> what were you referring to then? I'm can just you... saying I, I've 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 bared witness to You've uh... bared witness do you have the tapes? Uh, <laughs> eyewitness testimony. Eyewitness testimony? Yeah. I don't know. I think uh, we might have to do some character assassination to disprove that. Anyway, <laughs> the point being, separation is hard. And yes. that that definitely resonated with me uh, in that moment in, in, you know, just wanting to stay close to the people that you have a lot of uh, love and appreciation for. I think it, I was also at that moment, I think, where they just happened to hilariously walk in on Michael and Janet, basically <laughs> spoiling the whole thing in the, <laughs> what was it, the winery or the cellar in the yeah, bottom of the yeah. house or something. They basically and open then... the portal and they see it and they like, they hear <laughs> everything. And Michael's just like coming up with the story. What was, I can't remember the first story. Was it, the spy? With the excuse? 
Yeah. Oh yeah, I think he was saying like that they were spies or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's just trying to come up with names and everything. Actually, um, not what I was at that moment, but it was when he was trying to convince Janet, like, okay, we'll go, uh, we'll go back to um the other place, and we'll just reverse time and like reset everything. <laughs> it's just like this really complicated, complicated, complicated plot. To try to redo this whole experiment. And Janet's just like. I think we've taken this far enough. And I love that moment where Mike was just like. We have to do this. This is all we have. And it's just. It's them. With us. And that's all we have. And Janet just like looks at him like really sadly. And uh, like she feels bad for him and everything. It's so great. (laughs) That was a great. No that's a great moment for both of those characters. Because Mm -hmm. it also shows me. It shows you. Just how far Janet herself has come. Like she's yes. not a girl, as she says. I mean, mm. she's an AI of sorts. But look at how much she's been able to develop her own consciousness, her own soul of sorts, her own mind. Mm. And then also just being kind of the voice of reason. But then you also see the distance traveled in these characters, right? Look how far Michael has come from being this demonic, literally this this demon that lives to torture these people. And yet here he is with his back against the wall failed many times to you know advance these people's lives in the way that he thinks that they they, that they can but he refuses to stand down he refuses to give up there's a perseverance to that character especially that has emerged in in this season that has really like you know made me quite fond of him uh there's a lot of passion in him uh he's honestly one of my my favorite character of this series Mm -hmm. uh with just uh this refusal uh to allow uh bad to win or you know to just resign yourself to defeat and then of course it didn't matter because then they found out and then <laughs> they had to come up all right what do we do now <laughs> and then it was all over they were doomed to eternal damnation yeah that bitch. sucked <laughs> It's just like, okay, you guys know everything about the universe now. Um, you're going to hell. <laughs> and then, oh my gosh, the Jeremy Barami scene. <laughs> oh my god. I, 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 I remember when... I don't even think I was bothering to follow... I don't think you were even meant to follow whatever logic that was. It basically was time exists in a different way than it does on Earth. Mm-hmm. And it can be an infinite loop of circles that i think would be the closest in a year whatever it was it's a great device to use <laughs> but, but even but yeah. even how michael says it it's just like i don't know it's just this is the only way i can explain this i, I don't really know what yeah. else to say and then it's like what's that and it's the dot he's <laughs> just like uh tuesday july and nothing <laughs> nothing like the, and everything at the same time and everything at the same time it's just like the dot broke me and then <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end of it though Janet just like points at a part in the in the writing she just goes that's my birthday it's <laughs> the okay <laughs> I think for me though like this really launched my favorite part of this season which was all right Everyone's now on the same page now. We know what we have to do. And in in the next series of episodes, um, our main characters are given a chance to become better people by helping some of the bad people in their lives. So mm-hmm. we see them going over to help Jason's dad, you know, become a better person to get into the good place. We see... Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, with Jason's dad. Oh, my gosh. It was hilarious. So, by the way, all the Florida jokes that they make in this show are great and entirely accurate and spot on. I don't <laughs> care what you say. I think I think people Peter are too approved. nice to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> no, so with Jason's dad, they I think they had the idea of like help. No, no, no. He was they originally thought about having him help uh Pillboy since he mentions him a lot. Right. Right. But then they were kinda like, ah, it seems I can't remember what changed their mind, but someone had the idea of it's like, oh what if he helps his dad? And they're like, who's his dad? It's like, why not let it be Donkey Doug? 
<laughs> especially because like all the stories that you heard right. and they just went that's the saddest but hilarious thing that could happen to him <laughs> and and so yeah you see um uh, donkey doug when uh, he tries to convince his dance group to like be good now but donkey, donkey doug is just like all right peace i'm out i'm not doing this like his own dad wouldn't follow him to become a better person that's fucking sad honestly <laughs> And that may be actually one of the under, underrated truths uh, of the show is that it is funny and it, it is used for comedic effect. It does, in the back of your mind, remind you, man, there must be some people out there that whose real lives could not be more different. Mm-hmm. I mean, could not be more uh, similar than what they're going through in terms of how sad uh, they are, you know, like that, that is a sad situation, but I would suspect that that was based off a lot of people's lives, mm-hmm. uh, that way. Also, I want to find thing. Uh, so when they get to, uh, Florida, uh, oh. for tap Jason's dad, uh, when Jason walks out of the airport and he goes, what is it? Oh my God. Duval. When he does that, the reason why they put that in is because the, the crew were getting letters uh, from people from Florida, from Jacksonville, saying if Jason was a real, uh, what's the Jaguars fan? Jaguars? Mm, yeah. Jaguars friend, he would be saying that. And they just went, all right, let's put it in. <laughs> it, was, it was just funny. <laughs> One of my favorite um, reoccurring jokes with Jason, uh, and they do this constantly. Uh, there's a lot of shade. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's subtle. I think it's pretty overt. Um, cause you know, the, the kind of the, the running joke is that Jason's led a pretty trashy life and mm-hmm. many of his likes, uh, at least f- from the point of view, of what the show is pushing is he is a trash person. Uh, and like, I love how they always point out that his favorite movies are transformers and, and fast and furious. <laughs> <laughs> It fits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, that's that's not passing judgment on my part. I mean, if you like those movies, by all means, um, I don't think any of us care for them all that much. Um, I don't think we've ever talked about a Transformer or a Fast and the Furious on this show. Have we ever? Not on the no. show, but I've, I told you that I watched all of the Hobbs films. and Shaw. No, I saw like, I think like the last four or five of the Fast and Furious Oh, okay. Yeah, and Hobbs and Shaw, obviously, and like, I mean, they're entertaining. I fucking laugh sometimes, <laughs> but not for good reasons, though. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. But anyway, like, m- one of my favorite stops uh, was for Michael and Eleanor to see her mom mm. and then to see how she's moved on. And the whole episode, I'm just wondering... All right, she seems to have been a better person, but there's something here, right? Because she she was a very shady individual from the mm-hmm. other flashbacks that we've seen. Um, oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, she's horrible. <laughs> she was horrible. <laughs> and no. then it turns out... Go ahead. Uh, no, no, you go ahead. Were, no, I was just going to say, I mean, the whole thing that... It ended up actually being not that, I guess, devious and that, yeah, she was stealing money. But I guess it was because of her own like insecurity yeah. in being able to sustain a relationship like this that she was using it as an emergency escape if she needed it to, which mm-hmm. it may be sad to say, but I don't think that is all that rare in a lot of people's cases. Mm-hmm. No, I was gonna say the same thing. I like that she wasn't. She was being a good person. It's just she always has that fear that she was going to mess up or something. Mm-hmm. Also, what I liked about that episode is uh, Michael and um, the mom's new boyfriend. Like, <laughs> just having a yeah. little friendship of being architects and all that. <laughs> it's just, I love that scene, though, when they're in the, what is it, like a, some PTA meeting? And mm-hmm. they're just looking around like, mm, what a boring place, huh? <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, remind me, I don't, I think this was the whole episode. There was a, an, Michael and Eleanor. Uh, they're at the library. I think he's also showing her uh, some of the rebooted versions, and then she realizes that she and Chidi 
were were involved romantically, right? Mm. Yes. Um, and then it, the whole episode is, I think, uh, what Eleanor saying that it's hopeless or that she's a terrible person. And I think she's trying to drive Michael away. And then it all culminates with them at a diner. And I think I remember Michael throwing a drink at her face or something like that. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> basically that whole episode, like she, she wants to know what happened like in the past lives or past reboots, whatever. And she kind of, and she sees that she did fall in love with him, but she doesn't think it's real because she thinks, Oh no, you orchestrated this. I had like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had no decision in all of this, so I'm clearly not clearly not in love with him, and he's trying to convince her like, no, you, I literally drove you guys apart, but you kept coming together. Like, I don't understand how you how you're seeing it your way and everything. Isn't that when they like discuss determinism? Yeah. Okay. Mm. <laughs> well. It's funny because I actually disagree with the episodes. Um, ultimate conclusion on that and what was the conclusion in your eyes uh yeah because i think well the conclusion was that uh it was leaning more towards free will than than determinism Uh uh-huh and i'm much more determinist than free will Mm. i think free will is a joke (laughs) in many ways um I mean, free will is a joke in terms of how uh, it's executed, has been executed, or just the whole concept of it from a philosophical standpoint. Uh, kind of the whole concept of it. like, like every decision we made, we make has been influenced by everything else in our life. Like, yeah. there's a reason why, if we look at what color you are, what where where in the world you grow up in, what level um, household you um grow up in uh what time period you know if you're able to mark down all kinds of things we're able to determine up with a certain level of accuracy what you um what your future will be basically Mm -hmm. how how successful at least monetarily in life you would be uh and theoretically if you could get like a massive supercomputer and put every one of these details like down to the molecular level into that computer you could accurately map out the future because you know today is just the cause tomorrow is the effect if we could accurately analyze the entire cause then we can accurately analyze the effect it's some sci-fi shit but i I mean i haven't seen a good argument against it no I, i understand that uh do you think though uh would would you be of the of the viewpoint that you would agree with Eleanor that she really was never in love with Chidi? It just happened to be a circumstance oh, of what happened? She, um I mean yes and no, right? Like mm-hmm. my whole thing is like maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know, you you still felt love for him at the end of the day like mm-hmm. <laughs> people's obsession with free will is weird right like if you feel how you feel then that's how you feel <laughs> actually yeah. uh peter what you said about that concept of a supercomputer planning out like your future or like determining your future there's mm-hmm. actually a show called um person of interest have you heard of it person of interest no yeah, it's, a, it's at uh cbs uh, i think it was a cbs show but it's about this guy who made a ai computer to watch everyone around the world and like it looks at everything like your um you know credit card history uh mm-hmm. high school and all that blah 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 and like it's able to determine when someone's going to commit a crime and so the show is about oh. the guy yeah, who there's made a lot the... of concepts for that yeah yeah, it's yeah. A, so the show is about this guy who made the computer he hires mm-hmm. this guy to help stop the crimes either but it was a cop show <laughs> in a in a way I, I, <laughs> I fucking knew it i fucking knew it god damn it there's god cops damn involved. you network tv <laughs> there's cops involved and all. oh shit and we have god a cop is, i just remember a... i just remember the last season he literally becomes a cop the guy he hired <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh the okay. next vice president is a cop so <laughs> yeah well um anyway but uh, the cool thing about it. it is that you know all they're giving is a name it's like okay this person it's either going to be part of a crime gonna commit the crime or 
is going to be involved somehow. And so that's how they And they have to, to like work backwards and try and figure out what happens, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I but it's a, it saw a, it's a certain a, Tom Cruise movie like that one. <laughs> yeah, I was going to bring up the Minority Report. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. But there's a, it's it's not that, I think, unusual. Because there's also, mm-hmm. uh, what's it called? Uh, the Zola algorithm, right? The Pale Hydra. What was it? Mm-hmm. Winter Soldier? That was the whole project Oh, inside. yeah. Oh, yeah. That they could determine based on all of their, you know, per yeah, basically everything, right? All of their internet. Yeah, you use the access. past to predict your future, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, as, as we've seen, every in my mind anything nothing just happens within the universe there's always a cause and then an effect and i think it's the same way with human beings right so oh, alexis do you mm-hmm. remember agents of shield the do uh, i remember <laughs> it does he remember the, what question is that <laughs> yeah, there is <laughs> Uh, in it's the, um, so annoying. I still see him watching, fu- rewatching that fucking show. Holy shit! Dang. When? Uh, when? They wait, wait, hold the... up. Wait, hold up, David. David, hold your question. W- when did I do that, uh, Peter? <laughs> Recently. Oh yeah. Well, technically, I had it on silently in the background. Oh, silently. Okay. Yeah, sure. I was watching <laughs> the last season again. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Because you know it debuted on Netflix. Thank you for reminding everyone. It's on Netflix right now. The. <laughs> oh, the yeah seventh season and also if you're in the uk and you have disney plus it is getting the premier access treatment so there you go mm-hmm. well there was What's a... your question david well <laughs> I was, no i was gonna like i remember something there was a great scene when they were in the mainframe or the the framework framework that's what it is yeah and uh daisy she's like there's no way things could have been different just by like these small things and he's just like no people's lives can change by just the tiniest words it's it mm-hmm. could be i love you or i'm a father or this you lost this person just like the tiniest thing can completely change your life and then yeah and it goes way. back to we want to bring up more uh ips uh what, what's the what's the thing with uh that joker says to batman you're just one bad day away just from being me <laughs> it's the butterfly effect uh-huh mm-hmm. Where you know you go in the past, uh, you 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 kill a, a butterfly, you come back to the future. Everything is is drastically different, <laughs> literally everything. Uh, so yeah, and and I remember when they tackled that on that episode, you know, the sort of the free will versus determinism. Mm-hmm. I was like, I became really interested because that's something that I have looked at uh, quite a bit, and. <laughs> I was a little disappointed when they're like, well, no, like, it's uh, free will. You chose to love him. And it's like, I I, I get what they were trying to go for. Mm-hmm. I, I, I honestly think it's more of like Americans have this real individualism kick in them. This manifest destiny that's been enshrined in America. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This whole thing of like, you are this... Only you can determine your future, and da, da, da. and it's just like so unbelievably incorrect. And look how well that's worked uh, out for this country and the people of this yeah. country. <laughs> uh, not the best, um, but yeah, I, I, it was. I do think ultimately, like her love for him was. I don't even know what this necessarily means, but like pure, like. Mm-hmm. She did love him. Um, I don't know what I'm going with this. Go ahead. I mean, if, <laughs> I guess with if, me, it's like, uh, what was maybe? Yeah, yeah. The episode I think did land firmly on the side of free will, but I guess to me, like this whole like discussion of like free will or determinism wasn't really. I guess the the it wasn't a real debate because the whole the whole thing with Eleanor is that she. While she has been shown that she became romantic as she had feelings with Chidi, she's ready to dismiss that she ever really did because it wasn't quote unquote natural, that it was a manufactured creation that led to this being there. And I think the whole point of it was to show her like, who gives a shit what it was? It doesn't mean that what what is natural. Right, right. Like it, it doesn't matter what it was. You felt these things. It was you. 
Mm-hmm. The, the problem here isn't because you didn't feel You anything. clearly still feel them. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So I, that that's kind of... I feel that was the priority that was, you know, trying to like to kind of like sell home the message there. Um, but it also is with who Michael is now, right? Which is why there was a great pairing because he uh, was kind of being that voice for her and to try and tell her like, and what do you mean? What are you talking about? Why are you choosing to think like this? I mean, all of what we've been talking about the last few minutes, right? It's like, whatever these philosophical things is, you loved him. You still do. So shut up. I, this, this is kind of off topic, but when, um, what's his name? What's his name again? Uh, Ted Danson's character? Michael. Michael. Uh, Michael. Um, when he first turned good or what you know whatever i thought for sure there was going to be a twist where it's like <laughs> aha he's not actually good like you know because he's a demon yeah so i was like oh yeah like this is this is all a ruse uh but no it's one of those things he never even had like a falling back into evil arc like mm-hmm. once he turned good it was like yeah he's he's good now and then that was it which I found interesting. I, I I would have thought that they wouldn't have been able to uh, resist uh, good Michael back to evil Michael back to good Michael. Uh, Maybe if the show lasted Potter. ten years. Yeah, I was gonna say that. Yeah, if, if you went for like ten years, you probably would have saw the return of there was a character evil demon Michael. like that uh, in in a similar vein in a different show. I'm not sure if you ever watched this, David. I know Peter didn't watch it, but this character was kind of the same kind of character in the sense that um, he started off the series as a bad guy as the villain and then throughout a series of events he ended up turning around joined uh, the main group of characters uh, it's better not be anime it's not but it, it might as well be okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> but for I think it lasted like seven seasons just but he kept sliding no, it was uh, Once Upon a Time. Oh, Remember? Mm, uh, of course. It, I'm talking about the character uh, Mr. Gold, Rumpelstiltskin, played mm-hmm. by uh, Robert Carlyle. But it, they kept going back and forth throughout, like, literally every year. Like, mm-hmm. okay, this episode, I'm the good guy. Mm-hmm. But yeah. next episode, I'm the bad guy. Yeah, that's um, what happens with those kinds of characters and those kinds of shows. Mm, they just... No, I... mm. Go ahead. No, for once upon a time, it actually like really it started to really annoy me when um he was facing his mom his mom. Yeah. Because I thought like, okay, this is the moment for you to be good now. Like, go for it. And then no, he joins her, it does some evil shit or something. It annoyed me. Oh my god. Yeah, you weren't the only one. And for those of us who did like that show, the first three seasons were good. Yeah. Uh and you can just stop there. <laughs> it reminds me of with the walking dead the the main character oh, um rick? rick where it's well he used to be the main character oh like, yeah. he was written off the show well when i watched it he was the main character but one of the reasons why i just stopped watching 10 years ago yeah that's another one <laughs> fuck what season are they on 14 i don't know holy shit 10 10 okay god damn um one of the reasons why i stopped watching was rick's arc just kept repeating where it's like "Uh uh-oh he's turning into this evil authoritarian you know borderline bad guy and then he like catches himself before he goes too far and he's like no we're gonna be better and then what he goes right back to him going too far and then he stops himself it's like no we're gonna be better i'm gonna be better a good leader and then he goes right back to you know going too far and and it's like oh my god it, that was they repeated Rick's arc in the time that I saw it like three or four times holy fuck it gets annoying yeah. and I think ultimately those were part of the reasons why we stopped or at least why I stopped watching I don't I didn't watch the last season or two the last two of uh, Once Upon a Time I uh, kind of really grew disillusioned with it and then also with walking dead i I hadn't seen it since seven season seven isn't the last season of once upon a time a fucking reboot yeah it was weird i didn't watch it (laughs) i finished it it actually a few weeks ago um did you yeah oh wait wait. they they put it on disney plus now right Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, because yeah. it wasn't available previously. Yeah, I saw it. It was, it was fine. Fine. Yeah. Fine by fine standards. Yeah, I like the but ending. But you're right. Yeah. It was cool, but... I, I, I did like the ending. Um, overall, because uh, I do like that character, Regina. Mm-hmm. Um, but back to Michael, you're saying you're you're right though. Uh, you would have, I guess, based on previous experiences, um, you'd think that perhaps we would have seen that. But no, I think I I appreciated uh, this reformation. It made me like Michael more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It was interesting. Also, also, best thing about that episode is the running gag of that they keep having to leave the building they're on because someone's got to come in and shoot porn. <laughs> <laughs> Did you remember that? Oh, that's right. The library. <laughs> they're at the library and the, and the person's like... Also the diner. Oh my God. <laughs> it's, just, it's so funny. Oh my God. Fucking Florida. By the way, can we just say like, um, how many comedy series has Michael Shore written right so brooklyn 99 parks and recreation the office another good place and he's so consistently funny mm-hmm. i think all of those have been on nbc uh at one point or another it, it's great yeah and what's interesting with this show is it's basically just six characters mm-hmm. you know what i mean like mm-hmm for six characters interacting like there's not a lot of ensemble yeah like outside either because like i don't know, like parks and rec like you have your main cast of characters which i don't know it's a lot right but then you also have a bunch of characters each episode that come in like there's a lot of people in it right but with mm-hmm. this show it's, it's you just got the six and it's the six all of them bouncing off each other mm-hmm. uh and it's the fact that you're able to keep it fresh with these six characters, that's pretty good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he has also whittled it down over the years. Like, The Office was a huge list of characters. Uh, and then I think Parks and Rec was a more tight-knit group. It was like around six, seven people. And then here we have with The Good Place. So you just see, I think, the progression uh, with how he's gone with these series. And so I think ultimately uh, there's a lot of... Uh, to to wrap up on season three, right? So they end up, and and David, you feel free to add whatever you want to say about any stuff that we that we had missed. But basically, how the whole thing wraps up is they're able to find their way back to, uh, I guess not the good place or the bad place or, or wherever I mean, they the are. The afterlife. They can, yeah. They confront the judge. Um, Michael makes his case. Um, and the well, bad place. Yes, go ahead. Well, yeah, we did skip a lot. So, to, uh, just briefly, Tahani's uh episode where she's trying to like uh save her sister, I freaking loved it. It was uh oh yes, how did I forget that one? That was yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you're right. So yeah, like, go ahead. so yeah, they've always had just this competition between them. Yeah, and she finally just kind of like she wants to let it go, but her sister's really stubborn, <laughs> and it just kind of goes crazy. And I loved um how she realized um what was going on, and that she's looking at her artwork, and like there's always something two on this like separated two things separated and two things together she realized that it's this is how her sister sees her life all the time it's just her parents and then her her and her sister against each other all the time and tahana just like we're letting go of this competition and she hugs her and tells her like fuck our parents (laughs) you know it's just like they fucking screwed us up and we need to be together on this and it was so great. I loved it. <laughs> and then they died in Canada. Because <laughs> there was they a whole did? bunch of stuff right there. Yeah, they did because uh, they were uh, looking for, what's his name? Uh, it was a great uh, callback. The the guy that Michael had in his office, right? Mm-hmm. As a young person. Yeah, uh, yeah. The only person to ever guess uh, that there was a good place or a point system out there. Mm-hmm. There was a whole episode about that. The bad place people try and capture them. 
they had like a um, big action scene which mm-hmm. they had like a bunch of stunt people for and the, yeah. the whole cast were just kind of like I, I can't believe we're doing an action scene on the comedy yeah like, it was weird <laughs> but it was fun too yeah there were just so many times uh i think who was it oh yeah the guy that plays sean like i think he was supposed to get like kick, kicked in the chest or something yeah and he was kind of like oh i can do it it's fine and they're like Okay, watch the stuntman first. And he does it, and he's just like, okay, never mind. <laughs> and so he backs out of it. It was funny. Yeah, stunts are always fun. Mm-hmm. And then just to quickly recap, they go into the afterlife. Michael, it was like, what if if, if the guy that who we think that guessed a good place doesn't have enough good points to get in? They find out, ultimately, this is a bunch of bullshit here, right? Mm-hmm. And so he wants to go back to the judge and the good place. Things happen real quickly, just to summarize, and they agree uh, that they're going to try the good place, bad place experiment yet again, but this time with new test subjects, and that sets up season four quickly. Uh, one of the one of the things that I wanted to point out about that last bit of season three, which uh, which was I think the committee members of the good place, <laughs> um, I have never seen a more apt portrayal. Of modern day Democrats in power. <laughs> what a bunch of pussies. <laughs> the, you know who I'm talking about, right, guys? The the good place committee members that were like goody two shoes and they were like, well, yeah. we won't win, but at least we'll be right. <laughs> oh my god, what a bunch of useless idiots. I, I, I and I, I I was convinced. That Michael Shore was like, oh yeah, this is who I'm writing to be the Democrats. Because it's just, it, it, it's so accurate. I think so. We need to make a committee to discuss whether, what to do next. <laughs> while, while the bad place people are just fucking running them over. <laughs> <laughs> I think someone did make a comment about that in the, the good place, the podcast. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, I mean, it really, so, it, it really fits. is. It fits entirely <laughs> with how they've been um kind of Governing. this last decade yeah yeah because yeah, the bad place people are just like i don't give a fuck we're gonna break the rules we're gonna do whatever we want and they just bulldoze over everything they'll cheat they'll steal whatever and then the good place people are like oh this doesn't sound good you know maybe we should have a, a talk with them and da, 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 da. and it's like jesus you people are useless <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah no, I saw the I saw the comparisons, of course. Um, it was funny. Uh, very depressing. <laughs> yeah. So, um, no, go so ahead, David. I like the way Michael convinced the judge uh, as to how to run the experiment, which was just that, hey, Earth is getting really, really complicated, and we can't just <laughs> uh, do the do do what we've been doing for the past thousands of years. <laughs> And then Jason was the one that like made her realize you know, um you just you have to like step in our shoes real quick <laughs> to like yeah. realize how bad Earth is. And she goes in for like she goes to Earth for like five seconds or, or at least for us it's five seconds. But to her it's, I think it was months. And she's just like, the fuck is wrong with Earth? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Mm-hmm. You know, two hundred and fifty thousand people have died from COVID nineteen. And yet we want to be mad at the governor of California for having a party. We want to be mad at people for wanting to, you know, keep Disneyland closed. Mm -hmm. The governor of Florida says, I don't give a fuck. We're going to keep everything open. That's, I mean, (sighs) that's a fair question to ask, right? What the fuck is wrong with the people of this planet? Mm -hmm. Like, do you want to be there? uh, Do you want to beat a global pandemic or do you want to succumb to it? Mm -hmm. That's the insanity (laughs) of it, right? And then she gets the idea, well, yeah, I'll just... Erase everything. Well, that's on season four. Was that four? It? Was that four or was it three? It was four, yeah. It was four? Okay, then. Never mind. Yeah, season Spoilers. three, it was just like, hey, let's just do the experiment in that. He's, try- he's trying to convince her, like, people can become good, basically. It's like, no, yeah, matter, yeah, yeah. no matter what. And I, I kind of like how they went about creating the experiment. And so, basically, the bad uh, people in the bad place choose, the uh, the I guess, the test subjects. And, yeah but they go but they have to be as bad as the other ones you can't get hitler or some serial killer or anything like that like they just have to be dicks <laughs> basically 
and they go to the neutral place i guess uh to create <laughs> the neighborhood and in order to like get the like more residents into the place janet makes them and with the help of derek <laughs> which is it's always great to see him oh my god i love it and uh yeah you see the one for bells for genitals yeah yep chimes okay Chime chimes. wind chimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, do we see who they are in season three, or was that in the beginning of season four? No, no. I think season three ends with Chidi being yes. rebooted. Oh, so the yeah, yeah. Oh, so it's because the- he's too much of a pussy bitch. He'll he would have informed everyone of what was going on. Mm. Well, it was because so they, they got, had to- he they got his ex, and he was like, I can't. Mm-hmm. I can't do this lie in front of her, so we gotta erase the memory. Yeah, pussy bitch. And, oh my god! So that whole scene, it was great because, like, you know, uh, what's her name? Eleanor. Eleanor. She's like, she's super sad about it, and they had like this hilarious joke though, where she was like, "It's like I know you're gonna, and a part of you is gonna believe that, like, I like you're gonna think of me as hot or something." And she just, it was just a hilarious lineup. Uh, it's not a joke. I'm a total snack. <laughs> I don't know why it was just it was hilarious. I wish I could remember like the whole joke. I'm sorry, I fucked it up, but whatever. It's fine. It's fine. I, I, I can. I can. You ruined the podcast. Let's turn it off. Now. We'll start over. Just an hour and sixteen yeah. in. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, but that whole sequence of like uh, uh, seeing like the their past lives, them together, and saying goodbye. Yeah. During the script reading, the executive producer was there the script reading and afterwards like at the end of it he stands up and tells everyone thank you so much for this uh you guys did a great job and like just walks out but ted danson he goes up to uh uh mark evan jackson who plays sean <laughs> he, he goes he goes up to him and goes that just got a season four <laughs> like he knew right away like we're gonna get a season four <laughs> it was fun it's interesting. So, they didn't know they were already going to get season four when they were they, filming that. Uh, no, there was this was during the script reading that. Oh, know. okay. Yeah, I think by the time they filmed that, they probably did. But yeah, but that with um the executive producer's comments about that final episode during the script reading, like it just confirmed it <laughs> basically that they're definitely going to get season four. I mean, that's one of the things, right, with television is you never know Mm -hmm. if you're going to come back or not. And it's interesting because, like, considering, like, how it all wrapped up, it felt pretty intricate and and planned and everything Mm -hmm. for it to, you know, end the way that it did. Yeah. But to think that it would not get season... I I would imagine that was going to happen regardless. Cause you should imagine if mm. season four didn't happen. No, oh my God, that would have been the worst, uh, especially with that cliffhanger. Fuck that. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. overall, I would say season three was pretty great. Mm. Uh, uh, well, one last thing, the episode where Janet plays all of the characters. Remember they go into her, uh, her void, her void. Yeah. 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 Uh, just one funny thing. Uh, she was stressed the fuck out during that whole filming process because, I mean, playing every single character, holy shit! And there was a moment she said that uh, she recorded the script reading for that episode, and she would just like listen to it over and over and over to just kind of like get get an idea. Their mannerisms. Like, yeah, get their mannerisms. Their voice. Uh huh. And at one point, she sees the guy that plays Chidi like just walking in the street, and she like she like pulls over, puts down the window, and he, like he hears the recording that she made it's <laughs> just like she's just smiling and the guy that plays Chidi he just goes wow you're going insane aren't you <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, yeah but she said it was it was stressful but like everyone was uh, uh, was trying to help her out as much as they could and all that so yeah great episode though great uh episode for her that actress yeah no great great episode uh, great season um mm-hmm. I think we're we've said all we can about three. Should we go ahead and go on with four? Um, yeah. Let's um. So let me see if I can. Uh, 
so we already know that we begin season four with the experiment. The final chance, final experiment about whether or not this could work to see if uh, with this bad place, good place experiment that these people, these four random people, these new four random people can become better people, mm -hmm. uh, which would then decide the fate of literally all of time. Um, and uh, of course, we had some initial shenanigans from the part of the bad place trying to infiltrate some people in there and to cause a whole bunch of problems. Um, let's, uh, let's split up this into, into two parts, right? So David, real quick, tell, tell us about how you felt about the first half of season four. Uh, I, I really liked it. It was, I, I liked how all the other characters really put effort into trying to, um, make these new people into better people. Especially like the with uh, who was it Tahani and the person that she, who was supposed to annoy her basically, <laughs> I really liked their um, their like growth of friendship and everything. It was really nice. Um, and then you had that what was that one guy's name? The misogynistic, really racist, uh, the douchebag. I just call him the douchebag, <laughs> the asshole. Yeah, yeah. that guy. Um, Although probably honestly, golf's at Mar-a-Lago, I'll just tell you that. <laughs> but like his his character, honestly, finally really really funny. Just like I love the fact that the bad place just got like the worst kind of human being that you can get, and I liked his ending of on at least like in the experiment. It, it really I didn't think like oh he's a better person now. I didn't think that, but just kind of like oh that's that's the only moment where there was genuine i guess kindness in him yeah and like that actor did a great job on that scene it was great it was funny uh just to stick with that particular character uh the whole episode of him trying to get to apologize mm -hmm. for him writing a book that insulted everybody and and it just goes to show you just the the fragile like mentality of like these rich white guys in power uh like it 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 oh my god there's such snowflakes like look at how they fall apart just because they're like they're forced to grapple with their own like undesirable qualities that have such horrid uh ramifications on people around them you know it's like Bad Janet said, the reason why they're called baby boomers is because the tiniest thing could just make them explode. <laughs> I love that joke. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> I love it. And then, of course, at the end of it, like, um, I, I you're right, because the basically the very end is he did have. Uh, just a small smidgen of goodness in him when he realized he was in the bad place. Um, but I think what I love more about that moment was the callback uh, to the season one finale where we have Eleanor and Michael <laughs> doing the laugh together yes. and like the, the wicked laugh. And then the reveal, this is the bad place. You dirt bags. Mm -hmm. um, that always gets me. Yeah. No, I, I, just, I remember now uh, Eleanor's, uh, what she went through through that first half, it was it was great. I loved, but well, the episode was called that. The first episode is a girl from Arizona, and mm. she just has this breakdown of I, I have to save the universe, like that's my responsibility right now. Like, how am I able, how how am I able to do that? That's impossible, basically. Yeah. And I love Michael's answer. It's just like you went through the probably like one of the worst things a bunch of worst things people could go through and i can't do it because i'm a demon but you can because you're human like you'll be able to connect with them far more than i could i think we need a girl from arizona to do <laughs> to say now, i don't know universe. about arizona but i don't know i think we want to and I'll continue to uh, congratulate Arizona. I Nurture mean, I, their progress. If if <laughs> anything, I think 2020 shows just how far Arizona can go. 
<laughs> That's Mike true. Shore figured it out. Yeah. He knew. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but there's no hope for Florida. Oh no. <laughs> No, I think that's one thing we can all agree on. Yeah, I don't even—I don't even think the the show would make that argument. Um, <laughs> yeah, what you make? What you make of the first uh, half of season four, Peter? It was good. There were <laughs> jokes, and emotional moments. I liked it a lot. <laughs> Etc. Etc. I did as well. I, I and I think this was by design. I will say I was a, just slightly underwhelmed with like the. I guess well, they're not really. They're not the main focus. Not the main characters. But I wasn't all that invested with uh, some of the new people. Uh, not till the very end. At the beginning, it was a little bit of a rough, at least for me. Hmm. Uh, with uh, I don't even know what their names like the the. The, the racist guy, the the tabloid reporter, I guess that you know mm-hmm. was with Tahani. Um, it was hilarious though. It ended up being a demon, but the the, <laughs> the 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 first the woman that just did not give a fuck about anything. <laughs> she I could love, not be bothered. I love the scene where they're like they're they're making the residents fly, and her she's just like three feet off the ground, just like no, I'm good here. <laughs> I don't mind it. But it's just so funny that she's just like at their height level. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. So then, unless you wanted to say something, Peter. No. Uh, we get into the final batch of episodes here with season four. Mind you, there is an airplane currently flying over my house, so there may be some noise interference uh, here. Uh, so I'm going to pass it over to David to quickly uh, set it up for us, the final batch of episodes. Uh, so, yeah, basically, they're looking at the results. They're having, like, the little trial. Uh, only Michael could go in. The, the humans <laughs> can't. <laughs> so to, like, kind of pass the time, they decide, hey, let's have our funerals. And, you know, it just... I mean, it was cool. I guess I like, you know, they really it really showed like just how much each of these characters care about each other and all that. Uh, <laughs> I like that joke of um, I think they were trying to move Chidi's body. He was he was unconscious, and they were like, "Why is he so muscular? Like how?" And she's just like, "Oh, he heard that uh, doing push-ups uh, reduces stress, and he just never stops." <laughs> 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 um, but yeah. They're looking at the results and they're seeing that who was it the the misogynistic dude like he was just kind of getting worse and worse throughout the experiment uh but everyone else they did have some good um numbers going up and everything but what kind of what really sold it though is that yeah everyone else became good uh but the last luckily that last moment where uh the guy was about to apologize like his numbers just went super up and then they looked at the numbers of the people that they saved on earth they're like hey look see uh, they gone up <laughs> the eleanor's mom she became a good mother and she also learned math from <laughs> her her stepdaughter <laughs> i can't remember what kind of math it was but it was it was funny it was <laughs> and all that and it had like i think one of the best lines in the show of him saying people change when they get uh, the love uh, oh, fuck it was like people change when people are given love and affection how can we blame them when they don't and that was such a great fucking line um, and yeah he won the trial it was, a, it was a success and the judge decides perfect let's just reset the world and they're like what <laughs> <laughs> and so then now they everyone's just trying to figure out okay what the heck do we do uh we gotta figure something out and they got the help with all the janets and you get a portal scene <laughs> of oh them trying God. to get the clicker <laughs> eraser thingy away from the judge <laughs> and all that and they decide we gotta we need Chidi's help you gotta wake him up and give him all his memories and I like what Michael says. It's like, you want the most indecisive man in the world to help come up with a new way to <laughs> recreate the good place, basically. It, it was it was funny. 
And I loved Chidi's episode where you just get a glimpse of his whole entire life. He just right away from the beginning, he's he was indecisive. <laughs> I can't remember. Like, yeah, yeah. He yeah. had to decide two names and he starts crying. <laughs> uh, and then, um, well, what I love again, the endings of each episode are so great. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. So, in the end of his episode, I loved it though. The. Mike was like, "Are you sure you want to erase your memory?" And he goes, "I finally make one decision in my damn life. Are you trying to convince me out of it?" <laughs> <laughs> but he finally realizes that there's no answers to everything in the universe, basically, and that what things that I've done, it wasn't because I found the right answer. It's just because just people in my life wanting to care about me, basically. And he wrote a note to himself. And when he got his memories back, the note said, there is no answer, but Eleanor is the answer. Meaning like, basically him kind of decided. Simp? Simp. (laughs) Well, I saw it as him (laughs) deciding, you know, whatever problems they uh, they have, they can solve it together. (laughs) basically and you just see a whole different side of him that he's like there's even a joke he's like what was it no they, they look at the good place committee and they're like oh we're eating yogurt it was like we got every single flavor that they have because you know not one is better than the other blah 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 and she just goes shut up shut up i'm confident now <laughs> 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 it was great but uh, i'll go more but you guys decide well, what was uh remind me what was the the what convinced the judge to not reboot the universe um well you can't really redo the point system so what they decided on is that people who on earth will just keep going to their bad place because of how the point system works and from there instead of torturing them we'll give them a chance we'll keep giving them a chance to become a better person basically the test that they did in their experiment it's gonna they're gonna do it with the rest of humanity forever Mm. until they get enough points to go into the good place basically and and then and they mean like everyone like some people like it'll probably take them at least in our time a few hundred years but maybe someone like hitler will probably never see him in the good place (laughs) Because they just, some people might not be willing to change, and all that. And you see it in the, uh, in the tour in the final episode. You see like a little, they're walking th- like in the buildings or something, and you see like a little screen. It's the the douchebag guy. And he's being told, "Wait, I can't tell women to smile, but what if they do look pretty though when they smile?" And it's just like, oh god, you still need <laughs> he's some never work. gonna learn. <laughs> <laughs> you still need some work, don't you? And so that's basically it. It's just everyone. And it's just still a bit of a torture because you have to like put them in certain positions that there is just su- super uncomfortable. So like if like you know like uh, at the what they did with Tahani, like she has a chance to like really humiliate her sister in front of a whole bunch of people, but she decides to take the high ground and just go. You know, uh, she's my sister's great and blah blah blah. She just gives all these compliments to her. And that's how she becomes a better person, her better, mm-hmm. her best self. They really had a triumphant success with that whole, you know, getting that whole experiment. And um, ultimately, we should have seen it coming. I think to me, with the big twist uh, was finally their at long last arrival to the real good place and it's a fucking disaster (laughs) almost immediately uh the democrats object (laughs) power they give michael the reins to it and then they they, it's like (laughs) it's the same as like confirming amy cody barrett hey you can have it now we can walk away and you know not feel guilty about it (laughs) um they basically put michael in charge they leave they escape and um it turns out the good place is not all it's cracked up to be because when everything's perfect forever and ever for all of eternity, people start turning their brains, turn to mush, and it's not exactly peaceful. And that 
was obviously a theme that carried over into the finale and something that uh kind of damn near broke me uh mm-hmm. honestly because it, it it nicely wrapped itself back around right but it basically presented as far as like what the solution would be is once you've had eternity to do everything and you are done with existing then they create a portal for you to stop existing which is basically another another kind of analogy for death, the final death, if you will, uh, for these people. And we don't obviously see it come to fruition until the finale, mm-hmm. but it is a prospect that you just know we're going to have to endure an entire <laughs> finale of the characters that we have grown and love ceasing to exist. <laughs> so I had so I didn't know so the episode before that like the actual finale I thought mm-hmm. that was a finale me so, like, too it, so, I like, thought that I, was it I didn't think they were actually going to show the damn thing and then when I realized yes. they had, there was a whole episode left I was like fuck me now I'm going to have to watch this and it's going to destroy <laughs> everything that I was so happy about no, but for me though, I had to wait a few weeks. So like, I saw the second. Oh, to the that's last right. Episode. That's, yeah, yeah. So I saw the second to the last episode, and I'm, and you know they're like, oh yeah, we found the perfect way to live, uh, uh, in the good place, and all that. And I was like, oh, this is nice. You know, just, they have a they're in the good place now. They have a way to kind of like, uh, be fully happy and all that. It's great. And then like, I think a week later, I hear I'm, I'm listening to a podcast, and this dude was saying. It's like, oh, I can't wait for the final episode. And I'm like, there's another episode? What the fuck are they going to do? <laughs> and it wasn't until like the first five seconds that you see, uh, <laughs> what is it? Uh, Jason plays a perfect game of uh, Madden. <laughs> and I go, oh, no, we're going to see them go through the portal. <laughs> like, That's I what can't. you bitches get. <laughs> what? <laughs> but yeah, so that was my reaction to the beginning of that. <laughs> Yeah, it sucked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was it was it was torture. Mm-hmm. Um but uh, now that we've, you know, we can wrap a- around the conversation to the last episode. It devastated me. Mm-hmm. It, it it was oh, stepping back on it. I I honestly feel it was one of the most impressive serious finales I've ever seen. I think definitely one of my favorite. Mm. Uh, and kind of perfect in every way, in closing off everything, giving you a sense of finality. And while, you know, the idea of death, the idea of you ceasing to exist is very distressing and very much uh, front of mind throughout most of this final installment. It was also very melancholy with it because it was the prospect of a new beginning. It was the, the prospect of eternal peace. It was emotional, especially the bits. I think that one of the final, the final, in fact, I think, sequence between Chidi and Eleanor was legendary. That beautiful line of dialogue um just about summed everything up and to watch them all of course go through that portal and then i mean i don't know if i have any more words to say but i it, it felt at least for me when i watched this which was in i think it was early october uh 2020 um Fortunately, quite relevant and topical. Uh, and a discussion perhaps uh, we all would have. So I think it, all those things, it's just a range of emotions. And it left me with a little bit of a mini <laughs> existential crisis, <laughs> which I would assume would have been all but expected. 
Peter, do you have any uh, thoughts? Do you want to talk about the how they rap? I adored watching them one by one cease to exist because <laughs> I knew it would break you, <laughs> you little bitches. I knew it broke you emotionally watching that. And it made me laugh. <laughs> 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 can i be honest yes you're here honest. you're here to be honest um the idea of eternal life and getting anything you want in that moment ever becoming boring i don't know i guess maybe eventually it would get boring mm -hmm. but it would take a long long time yeah in my eyes anyway to get boring yeah like, I, I don't know. Like, I would learn every instrument. I would read every book that ever existed. Like, I don't know. Climb every mountain. I feel like there's just so much. What's that line from uh, The Lion King? There's more to do. There's more to be than seen than ever. Yeah, that can never be done. There's more to, yeah, yeah, there's yeah, more yeah, to yeah. do that can never be done. More to see that can never be seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. And I imagine when you're talking about on a universal scale, that would that would make sense too. You know what's funny? This is maybe opening up a little bit. But when I was little, to me, the idea of the afterlife, what I wanted to do um, as far as an afterlife, um, I never even thought of like heaven. You know what I mean? In my mind, the immediate, immediately the thing I wanted to do if there was some like, you know, afterlife was to be able to uh, watch the entirety of human history or the history of the earth, just to be able to just watch it, to be sort of like out of just be there, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like a ghost. And, and watching things and, and like to explore the universe or that kind of yeah. shit. And like the universe is endless. So there's always something to do. So I don't know the idea. I know a lot of people say like, oh, yeah, living forever must be boring. And it's like, maybe, but I mean, no one's tried it yet. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> well, we'll see. Well, the thing about these characters, though, is that it's not so much all you can do whatever you want. But the thing that like kind of makes them feel at peace is that whatever happy thought you've ever had it will happen in a good place. And I think that's why with Chidi, his like moment of peace was, uh -huh. uh, what was it? It was her, Eleanor's mom wiping off like some food that she had in her mouth and like, and then his mom like cleaning it up for her too. And it's just kind of like, you know, she's happy with her mom. Her mom like loves her and everything, but it's like they're one big happy family. And so it's not so much well that like, Oh, I mm -hmm. could do whatever because that's that was Tahani's thing is that I want to do everything <laughs> like I want to mm -hmm. learn how to do things on my own for once and then that's why she has like this long ass list well I think the real answer then would be uh reincarnation I think Maybe. with reincarnation it's we're, we're getting into these big questions now like uh yeah like what it, this is what the show is about yeah, exactly right? exactly <laughs> so that's that's not a that's not to suggest mm -hmm. that we're straying I think mm -hmm. it, this is kind of what uh, the show sparks, the conversations that we're having. Yeah. But I think with reincarnation, it's like you come you come back, but you're not you anymore. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit of you comes back in this next person, but like you're kind of... You slandering the Avatar? You're... Well, well let's let's use well, the example of the Avatar. It's different. Aang isn't Roku, and Roku isn't Kyoshi. Their individuality, mm -hmm. their consciousness was not reimbursed, basically, in this new body. It's a new person maybe a little mm -hmm. bit of you comes back and but it's like you aren't the part that comes back so mm -hmm. like reincarnation's always been a little i've always had a very conflicting uh time with the idea of reincarnation like it well yeah but is it really you i mean you you don't remember anything mm -hmm. it's you being rebooted and it's uh, yeah yeah maybe <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, yes, uh, <laughs> all of them, you know, committing suicide was very emotional. Oh my God. Uh, that's basically what it is. Don't give me that. Um, 
it yeah it's it's very very emotional uh chidi of course goes through first because no, jason oh his... well, yeah chidi oh no jason did yeah 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 well no jason did didn't he well no actually no you were right chidi did go first jason was supposed to go first but he lost his necklace that he made for janet and he's like oh i can't uh-huh. go through until i find the necklace and <laughs> he finds it but he stays like in the forest where the gate is and it uh-huh. was a great scene because uh, Chidi passes through the gate and Jason just like pops his head out of a tree. He's like, oh, Dip, you're back. And she's, Janet's just like, the fuck are you doing here? You you went through the portal, didn't you? <laughs> and he goes like, no, I have to, give the, I have to give, the, give the necklace to you and all that. And I liked this great, um, uh, I guess you could say throwback um, of when he was like, oh, it was pretty easy to wait for you. Like, I was just taking in the air the trees the forest like um just kind of thinking about the universe and all that and she just goes like a monk <laughs> he's like what <laughs> she's like no like never mind <laughs> and his that's a good little throwback yeah mm-hmm. it was great and then i love his last line of cheaty wait up and he goes through the gate <laughs> um you were saying about cheaty i think peter right or, or are we gonna talk about jason oh yeah Oh, no, he goes through first because his whole thing is like not being able to make decisions. So he makes the decision, you know, mm-hmm. he's going to go through and da 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 da. Chidi. Uh, what's her name? Never goes through. Tahani. Right? Uh, um, Tahani. Mm-hmm. She. Uh... I actually think that, again, I, will, I guess she, she carries on my perspective. Me, me too. Uh... Yeah. Like, <laughs> the whole time I'm thinking, like, you idiots, what are you doing? You have eternal life. You get everything you want. <laughs> yeah. And you're choosing to disappear into nothingness. What's wrong with you? That's, well, we don't know. I'd rather be, I'd rather be bored and exist than not bored, <laughs> and not exist. You know, like I, you know. like you have to imagine, like with everything at your disposal, there would be ways around you wanting to just die. I mean, I, I thematically it works. I get it for this series. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just like yes. trying to insert mm-hmm. my, like I guess yeah, yeah. Uh, my, my mind into it, and I'm like, I would not go willingly through that. I. I I guess theoretically they 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 must have experienced paradise for eternity, maybe thousands or millions of years. Yeah, I think it was millions, wasn't wise. it? Because I think like a million Jeremy Baramies went by or something. So it wasn't. Well, you don't even know what that yeah. means in human years. <laughs> it could be more than a million in human. I don't know. Mm-hmm. A long time, I guess. Yeah, I mean that's the whole. That's um, the point. It's like. A yeah. lot, a lot of time pass of them in a good place to finally get to be at peace, basically. I don't know. <laughs> I would maybe just just do that whole like uh, stasis thing. Like me too. I'm just gonna go in stasis. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm bored. I'll Might sleep for one of those. I'll sleep for a million years. Wake me up when things yeah. get interesting again, or something new <laughs> is discovered. Yeah. Because there's got to be new people coming you know dying every day bringing new and interesting things i don't know true (laughs) but yeah i think it's cool that tahani never went through because that that's i guess that perspective there Mm -hmm. yeah um and then of course it ends with eleanor uh very very sad (laughs) (laughs) uh and they Again, I I think it's interesting. I do think it's interesting. I think the reason they end with them like literally dying is because that's the, that's reality, really. Mm-hmm. Like there is no. Well, I mean, <laughs> who's to say? I don't know. Who's to say? Right. Who's to say? I mean, I I obviously, I I do have religious beliefs and all that, but like, as far as you know, human beings don't know of an afterlife mm-hmm. in this life, right? Uh, there is no. F- the only way to know is to go on that side. Everyone finds out eventually, but you're not going to find out on this side, mm-hmm. <laughs> to put it that way. Um, so that so most people kind of live believing that this is it, right? Like this is this is the one life. So I think they wanted to more closely um, represent that because also like they kind of. F- when you go through that, you kind of turn into these like 
sparkly like like it, it reminds me of the way um Carl Sagan or uh what's his name? Uh <laughs> the other one. The science people. They talk about like we are made of stardust, basically. Mm. And, and the way they philosophize on, you know, this, we we are but a tiny speck in a larger universe. We are made of stardust, you know, the carbon in our, in our body was made from the dying of a star and, and how, you know, death, birth, no, birth, death, rebirth, and all that, mm -hmm. you know, interesting circle of life bullshit, you know, Disney really hit the nail on the head with it. Uh, and <laughs> I, and I John, think they kind of, Elton John did write the song. Oh, okay. Yeah. You go, Elton. I wonder if he was high at that point. Um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I think they wanted to more closely represent that and, and sort of the, the, the good deeds we do live on in the people that are alive, mm -hmm. basically. Because cause they kind of said, like, uh, their 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 stardust basically returns to Earth and in on in sort of a positive influence basically, mm -hmm. and that's kind of how it is in real life, right? Like, if if you are a good person, the hope is you have a positive influence on the world and the life around you when you return to dust. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, Mike, my... here's hoping for the eternal life one though. Yeah, <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally. Uh, well, actually, the what happens when they pass If that the... one's real, then fuck all this poetry bullshit about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's life forever, baby. Uh, well, the thing uh, Mike Shore said that whatever happens when they pass the gate, uh, it's actually up to, to it's up to debate. You know, it could be that what you just said that our stardust goes into people and gives them a good influence or something. Or it could have just been like Eleanor's, like, I guess essence just trying to help out um michael one last time or just could be we just go out into the universe or something it can be up to interpretation basically yeah i think overall though uh the thing that made such a big impression with oh. me what i just wanted to um mention yes something um and it kind of reminded me of this is there's this, I, I don't know. Maybe David, you've seen it. It's called, it's a, it's a show called death, love and robots. Yes. On Netflix. Yes. Have you seen all the episodes? Yeah. They're great. <laughs> Do you, what? No, no. I said they're great. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I know. I love them. Um, the, the episode, what's it called? It's something blue. Zima blue. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the it, guy who like he makes like a whole bunch of paintings, but for some reason he puts a blue yes. square in every single one. Yes, it, it's this really interesting sci-fi story where it's a reporter. It's in the far, far, far off future. A reporter goes to interview a famous painter, and because because he he's going to reveal his next giant project, and the painter rarely does interviews, right? But here he he sits down with an interview with this reporter and he tells the story of his life where you know eons in the past he basically um reveals that he was he started off as a an invention of someone as a pool cleaner it just a simple mind doing a simple task you know cleaning the pool and over time he got you know he was fixed and made more and more smart and uh, autonomous and he became this basically humanoid uh robot basically droid type character and that he his whole thing was he lived so long he wanted to discover the universe and he became a painter and he started doing these massive paintings in the universe and he became famous and it was this whole thing but eventually he started to paint a little blue dot a uh, little blue square in the center of his paintings of the universe and as time got on the 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 spot got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where he was just painting these massive massive canvases of blue and the reason for that was because 
the 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 blue square was the blue tile of um the pool that he used to uh he used to clean and for his very last art installation he dug up that old pool that he used to clean and basically broke himself down until he was the pool cleaner again uh just a tiny basically the mind of like a a a, a simple tiny computer and with the simple task of cleaning the computer because that's where basically that's where he was his happiest um so he went on this massive millennia more than a millennia long journey of searching the answers of the universe and it just led him right back to wanting to be a, a simple pool cleaner you know content doing his job well cleaning the pool mm -hmm. and it kind of reminds me um of, of that this sort of last last episode and, and the idea of the door and going back through it after this massive journey that they went through mm. that's 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 a really good show by the way yeah it not all of them are that um it's mostly <laughs> gore and mm -hmm. uh actiony shit yeah. but some of them are some nice sci-fi shit mm. no actually um, i just remembered uh we were talking about like what the afterlife could be and all that and there's a movie called The Discovery. Have you guys heard of it? No. It's a movie? Yeah. It's a movie. It's, no. it's on Netflix. Um, but that one, the movie is about this guy. He figured out that when we die, our conscious does go somewhere. Like, But he, he has no idea where. It, it could be heaven. It could be hell. It could be another dimension. Like, he has no idea. But it does go somewhere. And mm -hmm. that was good enough reason for people to just kill themselves and and all and, and like in the movie you see like this the numbers of the population dropping. <laughs> just Oh shit. Yeah. And the guy's son he went to he goes to visit to visit him one day because this is like years after he made his announcement and all that. And that he found out that the dad he's trying to figure out where our conscience goes. And like he's actually rigged up a machine. He's like he wants people person dies, he can see the conscious leaving and he's able to capture it on video. Like, where does our mind go? And mm -hmm. it actually goes with what you both the, the two of you were kind of saying. It's kind of reincarnation, kind of just eternally doing whatever you want. But it's basically spoilers, sorry. But uh it basically what happens is that you just reborn into your same life only so with the with the dad the reason why he wanted to make this discovery is because his wife committed suicide and they said that mm -hmm. what happened is that the mom just he can't she came into the dad's office said dinner dinner was ready and he goes oh i'm not hungry uh i'll eat it later blah blah, blah. and she just oh she goes okay goes upstairs kills her kills herself in the tub like it's just so it was his fault it was kind of that's what he he does blame himself <laughs> like that was the thing and so when the dad dies in the movie they see what happens and it's the same scene playing out only after um the wife leaves the room five, like a few seconds later he comes out and he goes uh you know what Let, let's let's have some dinner like why not and the son just kind of like that didn't happen like what's going on mm -hmm. and this is honestly my favorite interpretation of heaven is that you you live your same life only that little bit of yourself that kind of goes should i do this should i do that should i talk to this person should i you know should i go to japan or should i go to uh, greece what is it it's just like those little moments of your life that you might find regret or feel like you should take a chance on something you should take it and it's just mm -hmm. this constant you're living the life that you're living a life without regret basically and but what happens when you die again? You're just living the same life. Only again, like you know, like I said, like uh, one day you maybe you're deciding where to go to Japan or Greece, and you, one life you decide Japan, and next life you decide Greece because you kind of feel because you think, oh, I'm probably oh, not okay. gonna go there. And mm -hmm. who knows what happens um, in those two? Maybe mm -hmm. like when you go to Japan, you meet someone, you fall in love, and you just stay there. <laughs> or like, but then in Greece, you just go there, you have a trip, you come back, and somehow you find a connection with someone because you both went to Greece all the time. And then you fall in love there. So it's like, it's going to be a different life. 
probably every single time because like we said the tiniest tiniest thing could change your life tiniest word the tiniest or some massive event could change your life and eventually because he didn't make that decision of skipping dinner he probably wouldn't do do that discovery that he made and therefore people wouldn't be killing themselves later on and it's just it was a really interesting take <laughs> <laughs> that no that's interesting no i never see i never heard of it like that mm. that's that's pretty cool yeah um do you have any last thoughts you guys want to say about the good place before we go it's one of the best shows good show <laughs> yeah <laughs> good place is a good show <laughs> yep <laughs> and do um and do listen to the the good place the podcast i've said some pretty cool fun facts and uh, in, in our last episode but i didn't even get to like half of what they said and if you don't definitely just listen to the ones with mike shore um mm. the one thing that i got from him that i fucking love and i'm sure you guys will agree is that he kind of goes about saying you guys don't have to plan everything <laughs> when you're making a big show <laughs> that's basically his thing he just came up with shit on the spot every single time and it just somehow worked out and that's my favorite thing because you know that you had that conversation with star wars <laughs> sorry here uh, we go we couldn't <laughs> <laughs> that you know they should have planned it out they should have done this and it's just yeah like, oh did they talk about that <laughs> they didn't they didn't mention star wars but like mike shore uh-huh. he does mention a lot that like you know you don't really have to plan things out um in, in your stories you do have to look at it uh objectively obviously you know, separate what you want versus like what's kind of needed in the story. But you know, it's 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 the one thing that every single cast member said, like either the actors or behind the camera people, that it was just good fun making that show. You know, there's there was no bad idea. If you wanted to put something in, it was going to be put in. They had to cut it because of time. Then it got cut. But it was it. The show was just good fun. It's a good show. <laughs> and it was good fun watching it. That's for mm-hmm. sure. And definitely do recommend it. I was just so happy to experience this, uh, especially with this year. It's been a really dark and depressing year. And this was actually a wonderful source of joy up until the very end, of course. Um, uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I can't strongly recommend this show enough. I think it's going to do a lot of good and just it's it's so encouraging to see a show like this but a group of people who just want to be better people and promote goodness around the world and how often do we have that and so i think you can hear from all of us go on watch it it's good and thank you all for listening to us thank you peter and thank you david for being here uh i'm not sure what show we're we're doing next and i know moreno has uh been toying around with some shows uh i i know she wants uh me to get into one day at a time uh, i'm sure she would want to talk about the crown or something i know uh, mm-hmm. i want to see what david thinks about Shit's creek whenever we do that if we do that oh god <laughs> it's not ending it's never ending um <laughs> and and don't forget to stay here for red spotlight we have a lot more content especially of the Guillermo del Toro variety as well as more amazing content to close out the year that is 2020 so keep it in here keep it here under our red spotlight and we'll see you next time bye bye <laughs>